In this episode, we continue our trip through the Sunshine Coast hinterland of Queensland, adventuring into some unknown spots we haven't explored before. With Dad's MUX still suffering from a blown front diff, we both jump in the GU to meet up with Jeff and do it in the dirt in his monster Jeep Rubicon. We smash our way through overgrown vegetation to discover tracks that could have easily been lost forever. I forced myself up some of the toughest hill climbs I've ever faced and Kai was served with some of my famous bush cooking. Okay, no, I, I don't want to eat this anymore. What is that? But as always, we have one hell of an adventure. Proudly supported by Tread, Superior Engineering, and in part by. If you want patches, we got patches. Have you seen our patches yet? No. You whack them on your jaw, double the value. That jaw just went from $1,000 to $2,000. So you're saying that if you want to buy this, it's $1,000? I'll sell it to you cheap, but if you put it on anything, it'll double its value. Bargain. It's an investment. It would be silly not to buy one. Awesome little campsite here out on the creeks behind Kenilworth. It's quite dry out here at the moment though, as you can see. The water's still running, but it flows in under the rocks in a lot of places, but pretty cool little swimming hole here. Yeah, what if you put the patch on a patch? Then you quadruple your value. No, but then you don't stick the patch to anything. It's ten times value. It's just extraordinary increases in value, whatever you do with it. We're up here in southeast Queensland, continuing along our adventure. If you had a seen the previous episode, Dad's in two-wheel drive with a blown front diff, so we've just been uh, four-wheel driving and exploring mostly in the patrol. Not 100% sure what the plan today is yet, but probably do some more tracks in the area, head up towards Emma Moor. Might camp up there tonight, try and find a couple swimming spots and stuff. We've got Jeff from Do It In The Dirt coming out in his Jeep, so he's going to tackle a couple of tracks with us today, I believe. Should we tell Pa that we doubled the value of his car? So I got your new patch there on your jaw. Just telling Kai it doubles the value of your car now. Excellent. You're trying to double the value after blowing it. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, made it out the back of Kenilworth again. So I've come through to a spot I've never actually been to before, which is straight out behind the tip, which is there. We're heading out that way. So I met up with Jeff in his Jeep Rubicon twin lock 37s reduction gears. So it's gonna probably make a joke of the patrol on the tracks. But yeah, Jeff knows this area pretty well. So dad's gonna jump in with him. And then we're gonna yeah, head for a drive out, find some tracks to do, hopefully. Should, uh, should be a good morning. This track we're on now is very overgrown. We're deep in the jungle out here. We've been doing some track clearing and smashing of paintwork all the way along it. But we've come to this washout now. I don't know, it looks pretty dodgy to me, but Jeff's keen to try and squeeze his way around it. It's so thin and that like bit there is undercut. So he's gonna drive his car up to it anyway and see how it looks. Oh, 
come to the back. I think your back's gonna go in as you come forward. <laughs> His back's still gonna go in the hole. Your back's still gonna go like well in that hole. Yeah, I think you're gonna lose a car if you keep going down a hole. Yeah, you can start straightening up a bit if you want it. We're turning around on this truck, there's just no way we're getting through that washout. The Jeep wasn't gonna make it, and then there was no way in hell the patrol was gonna make it. So we'll go back and find another way through this area. vision are you going the right are you going the right style? i don't know i lost what i was doing yeah where where should i go from here that We've come to a hill of severe consequence now. This is a steep, nasty hill. These tracks that Jeff's taken us on, I don't know. <laughs> no one's been on them for a while. He's just taking us out here to all the gnarly stuff that nobody does anymore. Anyways, he's coming up first and see what happens. It's very steep and as you can see, like the track's a bit overgrown. You're gonna have to try and straddle that right there, stay right, but then it gets funny up there. button in known to mankind close your eyes put your foot down and hope for the best Go backwards, you reckon? Yeah, so it's safe to go back. There you go. Well, there you died. That was the worst. All right, I'll do another go, even though I'm terrified. Take it a bit slower this time and see what happens. Nearly, I was very close to not doing that again. That was something. There's not many hills I'm like, nah, I think I gotta turn around here, but. <laughs> that really scared me, that. I think the first time I was just driving, I just, I don't know, it, it's so hard to control the throttle on this thing and you can't buy throttle controls for them. It doesn't suit it. And I was like, Jeff was saying I was too, vroom, vroom, which I really struggle with. And that's why we're sort of vrooming and lifting it. 
that was just slow, I controlled, like shaking. <laughs> oh, that was, whew. The next track we're going to do was called Armchair Track. I've never done it, but Jeff was saying it's really good. And I also had a couple of people recommend it to me before I came here, but they've just closed it. <laughs> like we've been facing out here the last few days, they seem to be in the process of gating off a heap of these tracks in this area. So a bit disappointing, but yeah, I don't know. Have a bit of lunch here and work out a plan. So capable that Jeep and so good at crawling with those traps and reduction gears. It's crazy. Just the one camera and the one tripod. We've got a super washed out gully and creek here to get across. It's quite steep in and out. I think the Jeep will be alright being a smaller car, but the problem I'll have will be hanging up my rear and smashing everything. winch and then pull me off. I'm just sitting on the rear bar, it's jammed. Probably drive that now. So it was a quick little pop up. Made it back out of that area there back here at the dump and where dad's car is pretty fun day out there wheeling fair bit of bush bashing though and the good couple of tracks we were going to do are being gated off now so jeff was sort of saying like they've gated this now they've gated over there the gate down there so it's probably a lot of this area done for i guess gonna air up now jeff's heading home he just came up for a drive from brisbane for the day and Dad and I have to go find camp somewhere. It is starting to rain a little bit though, so hopefully there's not too much coming in. We'll see what happens.
Couple of hours have passed, a little bit of a drive this afternoon. Don't know where we are. We've gone up towards Emmermore somewhere and out into the state forest and found ourselves a spot to camp for the night. It was getting late. It's not like the perfect spot, but it's good enough. On the side of this pine plantation hill here, just a bit of a open grassy patch where it looks like people have camped before. We'll get this fire going and don't know. <laughs> Go have dinner, watch YouTube, do things, go to bed, wake up, drive. Perfect. Nailed it. We've been talking a little bit about Jeff's Jeep versus my patrol today and you, like you can tell that there's no way my patrol would keep up with his Jeep once you got on the more serious stuff. You know, even today it was doing those hills easier than mine. We were sort of talking about it's hard to build a car that's purpose built for everything. Jeff's is very purpose built for weekend warrior, kept the weight very low, it doesn't have any gear in it. Obviously there's the reduction gears, the 37 Maxis Treps and the Jeep Flex. You know, they're a bit of a lower, lighter car, like big wide wheels in a narrow body. They're sort of set up for that stuff. And I think you can set the patrols up good for that sort of thing too, but I've, but with mine, it's got a lot of weight up high, you know, on the roof, the big swags, the treads, the awning, all that sort of stuff. Cause they're mods and you know, for when I'm away on these couple week long trips and I've got a fair bit of gear in the back. But you know, if I change it all around and turn it into more a weekend warrior patrol, then you're gonna lose this comfort of living out of it on the road a bit when you get rid of some of that gear that you have. So it's just one of those things, you, it's hard to win when you build a four wheel drive to make it the perfect everything, but I feel like the patrols are good all around. It can still do like really tough tracks, obviously it's twin lock patrol and 35s, but it's just not gonna keep up with that more extreme stuff off road. mini little spa bath just on the edge of the road <laughs> left our camp not too far away and came for a walk down to this spot that dad spotted yesterday because it's already very hot up here in the queensland sun so I figured it'd be a nice little spot to cool down gonna leave camp sort of set up where it is i think with dad's two-wheel drive flown diff mux and we'll leave our swags and that there and go for a dive and explore around the area. We've never been here before, so it'd be cool to see what it's like. So nice and refreshing. How nice is it out here in these pines again? Another area that's full of pine plantations. Time to head out for an explore though and hit the tracks. Pretty steep hill this one. Dad and I have been talking about this morning and really trying to work on throttle controlling this car. Cause Jeff was saying yesterday, like on that hill where I got a bit all out of shape, it was, t as I think I already said, it was too much on and off throttle. And that's what we both really struggle with this car. So working on locking our foot in the foot well, really like trying to hold your leg steady it makes such a big difference so it'll control nice and steady up these hills jeff was even saying you put a bit of sandpaper on the side of your footwell which sort of lock your foot there better but yeah we'll just keep working on it practicing getting better like i consider myself a mid-range four-wheel driver definitely not a uh, super good one i just 
had quite a bit of experience and know it reasonably well, but something I'm still always working on and trying to get better. And yeah, once you have those guys that are real experienced, you pick up those things. Hopefully everyone is enjoying the episode so far. There was an awesome trip we had up there at Southeast Queensland. This was actually filmed oh, three, three months or so back now. There is a, sometimes a fair gap between filming and actually these episodes coming out. But we are only one week out for Christmas. So quick product to show you guys from one of the companies that's supported this channel for a long time now and helps make trips and videos like these possible. It is from Outback Equipment, Tough Terrain, which is one of the brands that they sell. And it's one of those doorsteps that helps you get up onto the roof of your four wheel drive, which can be quite painful at times. So with these doorsteps, they just grip onto the latch on the door of your four wheel drive. You sort of adjust them around, get the flat surface there. They got little rubber feet there so they don't damage your paint or anything. Grip surface on top. And then they make it much easier to get up on your roof and untie things, grab swags off, recovery tracks, all that sort of stuff. Light, small, super easy to carry. But yeah, they're 50% off at the moment on our back equipment, so they're pretty cheap. I'll drop a link if you want one, maybe last minute, Christmas gift, whatever it be. But back to the video, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the episode. across this absolutely monster hill there's the patrol down there there's a rolled car next to it which well i don't know it's been there a long time but i guess it's got destroyed on this hill and yeah it's big and that cross over there like that's an angled rut very deep you know look how small that is compared to that track and you're just gonna get sent to the sky on it and it's also still got a wetness on it from whenever they had rain out here last. Which means you're not going to be able to hold your line on it. You're going to be slipping and sliding on this red stuff. So it's probably a turnaround. I think this is just a silly hill to do. Dad's smart decisions this time instead of Dad's dumb decisions. I'm learning. Super smart. Um, super smart. So super smart, super smart selection. Dad's super smart selection. If you want a hell of a challenge, but this hill out at Emmamore. If you want to dispose of your car quickly, just drive up here. <laughs> Perfect. If you want to lose your four wheel drive, it's a good place to do it. And there's that in that rut there. See how big it is and how steep it is. Can't even walk down it. You got a job in there. I woke up in the middle of the night, open my eyes and my own mind. Dreaming, dreaming. Kai is nice little hill climb coming up out the other way of this section and it's pretty fun here too. There is a side track around this but we'll have a bit of fun in this one first. There we go. Super smash selections fail. Back to dad's dumb decisions. Sat on your rear diff. You'll have to go back. That smart selection fail. Oh, no. oh, you get hot and sweaty out of here quick. We had a few goes at that, but just not working it just seems to be sitting on the diffs in there we tried packing and a couple of different lines but yeah anyways we'll um come around and then tackle that next section
Alright, he made it up there. That track ended up taking a while to get through. I don't know, it didn't look too much. Then once you're on it, it became a lot. Just busted that rear flare off a bit, but that was the already broken one anyway. Oh my god, do you see that rare wildlife over there? Oh my god. It's a rare brown cow. Yeah, and it's a white one, an albino cow, never never seen yeah, before footage. Oh, another one. That's insane. Mm. Wound our way back out of those tracks and down to this nice little river spot we found here, although I'm not sure if you'd call the river that nice because it's dirty, but <laughs> still. Uh, nice little crossing there and then pulled up on the edge of the rocks and creek here Have a bit of lunch and then not too sure what the plan is this afternoon yet We haven't found heaps out here yet, but it's still good to be out here exploring and stuff And I find that if I don't go to these places, I'm forever wondering what's there sitting at home thinking about it So at least I've been out here had an explore and I know what the area is like and has to offer The amazing crystal clear creeks of Emmermore Look, it's, it's, even it's so, yeah, it's so clear that you can't even see the bottom of the 10 centimetre deep water. There's not heaps of good wood where we're camped, so we're going to grab some up on top of this hill here. Seems to be quite a few nice red logs around, and we'll Head back to camp soon, I reckon, and have a get a good fire going for the night. And an early dinner. Early dinner. What's for dinner? The one pot Mexican pasta cooking thing. Took a pretty savage beating with scratching today and the last few days, <laughs> just this whole trip. It's hard to see on camera, but yeah, all this stuff all through there. on this car as each trip goes by but it's all part of the fun it's uh it's just what happens <laughs> pretty good day out exploring there wasn't as many tracks around here as i hope but still a few fun drives and nice area to check out and see we are back at camp it's good having the swags and stretches and a few things already set up so just going to get this fire going and then cook some dinner For dinner tonight, going to cook up a, wow, I'm getting smoked out here. Going to cook up a one pot pasta Mexican something pot of food, bush cooking. Oh God. <laughs> it says onion, but we're gonna use spring onion slash shallots because this is bush cooking. Some celery, 
some garlic, some garlic. Can you just turn down the wind? Matt, I said turn the wind down, not up. Thanks. Oh my god, I just use my magical powers. So they're cooked until softened and translucent. Oh yeah, just, I'll, I'll just put my hand in and feel it. Probably just uh, lick them. Put your tongue in, then you'll know. <laughs> okay, we need one tablespoon of cumin. It's the spiciest spice in the world. It's actually been banned in 73 countries. <laughs> because it's so spicy, because it kills people. One tablespoon. Thanks. You stir that, we haven't got all day here. Thank One you. teaspoon of dried oregano. Is that about a teaspoon? This one's bloody spicier. This one's actually been banned in 117 countries. Now it says to add one cup of freshly chopped cilantro. We don't have any, because this is bush cooking. Two and a quarter cups of water. What the hell are you doing? You tell me when it's two and a quarter cups. Is that it? Yes, that's it, Jesus. You're supposed to do the measurements. What are you doing? I don't know. Okay, no, I, I don't want to eat this anymore. What is that? You are no longer a part of this project. <laughs> now we got some Mexican beans to go in. You stir that round. Okay. Is, there, is there any leftovers? No, this is it. Is there, are there any leftover cockroaches? <laughs> That'd be better. You need measuring. Anything with bush is never good. And that's where the recipe takes a turn because we don't have diced tomatoes, so we're going to use tomato paste. <laughs> okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, it's not going to be good otherwise. What is wrong with you? I need a uh, spoon. Tomato? No, no, we're not doing this. We are not doing this. What are you doing? All right, they're going in. This looks like absolute deliciousness. Garbage. I thought so. No. Okay, no, I can't. Okay. Now, we add in a packet of pasta. Stir that in. It's kind of covering it up. And now we cook it for 10-ish minutes or so until the pasta's ready, then dinner's looking good, boys. Is it though? Looks like it's ready. That pasta's cooked through. We'll serve her up. I don't know what this is here. And then we add some crushed up corn chips in it for crunch. And then some cheese. Get that good crunch. Okay. She's ready. That actually looks pretty presentable. Kind of. Okay, well, first of all, what do you give it for, for presentation? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's hard to give it presentation because of you have to mix the cheese and chips in. So we're going to ignore those and the presentation when it was first served. Presentation is, I don't know, I feel like what I normally give it, just a solid eight. Taste test, however. That's where it goes downhill. <laughs> Oh, it's alright. I'll give it like a seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good day out explore. Mm. Back here at camp. But yeah, we'll just keep practicing on it. Wound our way back out of those tracks. Whoa, there goes the camera got stuck on a tree and I find that we'll get this fire we'll get this fire going and don't know I, I threw the speaker here you go then okay. okay so tonight we are going to be cooking gourmet chicken and noodle soup <laughs> Mate, yeah, you did it good a second ago. Okay, um... Plan, <laughs> plan for tonight, go. Okay, the plan for... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hang on a second. Okay, so for tonight, we're going to um, light a fire at this beautiful place. Hopefully not burn it down. Then we're going to have dinner. What are we having for dinner? What's, what's on the dinner menu tonight? One pot Mexican pasta. Okay, I have no idea what that is, but it sounds delicious. Um, and then we are going to go to bed, and then we're going to wake up in the morning, and we're going to drive. Rinse and repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. <laughs> like eight.